Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, you feared it, you dreaded it, it's Teferi, the hero of Dominaria, the ultimate commander for Historic Brawl if you want to do absolutely nothing and win. So here we are. We don't have Elminster like we do in Commander, which is one of my favorite Commander decks, but we do have Teferi, and this is probably one of the more classic Planeswalkers for Blue-White of all time. Building a Brawl deck around Teferi is easy. You counter all the opponent's things, and you blow up all the cards that they might want to play. However, there are many traps in Teferi that I'm going to urge you not to fall into. For one thing, not all counter spells. You have to be able to solve problems. You see, Teferi competes in Hell Q. In Hell Q, people are used to their things being countered. It happens every game because the best blue decks are up there. So they all have hand disruption. They all have uncounterable spells. They come prepared. You have to be able to solve the problems. And solving the problems means you have to be able to blow up all kinds of stuff. So we're running cards like Farewell, of course, but Hour of Revelation and Planar Cleansing are two cards that I found absolutely must be included in this deck in order to keep up with what the opponents are doing. Also hidden in this deck, we need to not just draw cards from Teferi. Now, this is a something that you might, a trap you may fall into if you've played Teferi in other formats. Not necessarily standard, but in historic, in extended not extended, Pioneer, what, what do they call it? Explorer. If you've played Teferi there, you know that the solution is to get down Teferi and plus it, and you don't need a lot more card draw. Not really. The Teferi card draw buries the opponent itself. Historic Brawl has many more options and people prepared with endless amounts of card advantage and value either through their commander or through the cards in their decks combined with their commander. So we need to not just draw cards, we need to bury them in card draw. And we do that with Pull from Tomorrow, Silver Scrutiny, Blue Sun Zenith, Sphinx's Revelation, these X spells that let us just draw a whole new fistful of cards to win the game. They also help put the game away when we finally get that Teferi minus eight, although most opponents will scoop by the time that you plus a Teferi and they can't stop you. So if you've never actually done the win con with Teferi, I'll explain that in the deck tech video, which is going to accompany this on my other channel, link in description. You can go watch that video if you want to. Here, we're gonna keep it short, simple, and just say we're gonna counter stuff, blow things up, and rage quit them. Let's dive in. Let's read. Remember the glory of the hero of Dominaria. Let the Teferi nonsense begin. Kinnon. I think if uh, Historic Brawl has a villain, it should be Kinnon. Uh, Bolas is a good one too, and many would consider Teferi a villain, and that's all reasonable. But I think the best deck that is also extremely overplayed, if that is even possible for a best deck, is Kinnon. I think Kinnon is... Kinnon is just the card, you know, the deck. Solutions to Kinnon. Blow it up. A lot. Uh, if they play enough counter spells, and many Kinnon decks do play a good number of counter spells, you're in huge trouble because they just counter your board wipes, which are very important. Uh, we could keep the veto, but their creatures are going to be the biggest obstacle we have. Also, I usually like to shoot down the Kinnon with these absences, but you've got to also deal with their early creatures, which is really hard to do. So I'm just going to get the Incubation Druid dead. You got to bolt all the birds, and their deck is basically all birds, all mana. All right, I need a, a Plains or an Island next turn, please. Thank you. Deck is cooperating. Now we just got to get to six. And six is so much. And if they have any counter spells, it's a real problem. The midnight clock is ticking. We got to resolve one of these before it goes off. We also need another white source. Here's Kennen. There's Sinister Sabotage. Do they have a counter? All right, we've drawn the first counter out of their hand. Okay, <laughs> we've got card draw for a few turns, but Cannon right now has five mana available. At least they can't spin the wheel yet. Look at top five, put a non-human onto the battlefield. That's the Cannon wheel. So this taps for two, they've got six. 
You're going to brainstorm. Sure. Two back on top. They have a shuffle effect. Or are they just gonna... Pass the turn. The settle the wreckage wandering emperor, wandering emperor threat is too great. Just try to pull the two. How many counter spells do you think they have? Well, this is a good one. Narset is not particularly good against them. It's good against the clock, but we don't intend to let the clock get there. All right, Teferi. This should draw a counter spell. All right. They have they've had at least two counters. Kinnon does need the right mix. It needs mana generation. It needs big hits for Kinnon, and it need and it usually runs counter spells. If they draw the perfect mix, the deck is unbeatable. Um, right now, they're a little down on mana producers. We have no idea how many big monsters they have in their hand. And it looks like they're going to miss this land drop. So this could be a lot of counter spells. It could be a lot of big monsters. It's not mana creatures. So do we go for it? Or do we try to Graven Lore first? Next turn, they can spin the wheel for the first time. Ah, man. I, I guess we just try sweepers back-to-back -back turns, right? If they have counter, 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 we lose. Because they don't have to put their mana into anything, but they might put it into this clock. All right. Cleanse ya. Come on. Yes! It worked! <laughs> All right. We can take it that their hand is four very expensive cards or powerful cards. Oh, the Piper. They held back the Piper. I think we got to get rid of that. And I think Teferi has to do it. I don't think I want to farewell this. If you show remorse, I'll show oh, Veil of Summer. Ouch. That hurts, opponent. That really hurts. Now Teferi dies. Fortunately, we can blow up whatever they play. They're going to sneak something out, though. How big is it going to be? Well, I guess if they attack Teferi, they can't. Yeah. All right. And Paradise Druid. Okay. We've got Hour of Revelation. Do we say go? If we do, it flips to Day Night, which when this transforms, they look at their top six and grab a creature. It's a really good card for the deck. Uh, I think I play Teferi in plus. We're trying to draw him in a little bit more. And right now, this attack doesn't kill Teferi. We have mana for Graven Lore or Castle Activation, but I probably should have untapped the Snowland for the Scry. All right, here comes something from hand. Are you ready? Oh, it's a big hasty Hexproof. Okay. Sorry, Teferi. I didn't know that was going to happen to you. <laughs> didn't see the Craig Plate Bayloth in your future. But, you know, now you cost nine. Which means you're out of commission at least for a little while. And the opponent with no counter spells here. There was no stick. They transform because they flipped. And they get a gem raiser. Interesting, interesting choice of creatures in this deck so far. Pretty good, though. All right. Nuke them. We're drawing all of the big boom boom spells, and we need them. Ceratops can't be countered. Protection from blue. All right. Complete with haste here. But they did tap it. They didn't give it vigilance, which means Wandering Emperor can slice and dice. And we should probably do that on our turn before they realize their error. There's no telling if they would have used Vigilance or not on the next turn. Key to the Archive. That can meet a negate. Very strong mana rock you got there. We could go for Teferi. 
I think that's a little irresponsible when we have so many counter spells and a castle. This is the part where we can just start grinding. They have Sublime Epiphany. No! Too good. I'll take a Pact. Now I'll go for Teferi. Let's skip to the good part. And it looks like things are about to tip. We must protect the people. The Teferi tipping point in any game is when you just get to untap with Teferi, no problem. Stroke away the Kogla. The big monsters are coming out, but it's too late. Opponent with the sportsmanship. Very kind of them. Considering they got crushed. All right. Wins against Kinnon. They don't come by that easily. So you got to take them and smile and move along. All right. We get the mirror. Teferi versus Teferi for superior Teferi power. We have an opener that features the creature lands and some mystery cards with consider and seek new knowledge. Also the Pact of Negation. We'll take the lands and the counter spells. And that's about all we care about. Lands and counter spells in this matchup. Board wipes, not so good. Long game, just try to outdraw them. It's about all we can do. Just gonna seek new knowledge now so they don't get the option to counter it and put away Divine Purge. And as Kanto, we can blow up with the intervention. And again, I'm just gonna do it now. Like, you don't wanna give them opportunities to counter things. You just take those opportunities away by playing on your main phase sometimes. Don't worry, we'll, we'll slip into hold mana open soon. This has been fast and furious action for a blue-white battle, but we're about to just slide into the part where we stare at each other. I'm very nervous, though, that we're going to run out of lands. Like, I, I want to draw this veto. But if we don't hit lands or draw cards, we're going to lose this game. So do I keep probably the best card? Like, this is this is a counter target to fairy card. All right. That's tough. That is tough. I, we have to hope to basically draw lands every turn for the rest of the game. But we don't care about that. The opponent played Seagate. And uh, Seagate is a card that you usually play when you're out of other lands to play. So they might not have many lands in hand either. Looks like they found a fountain. They'd attack me with that wall if they could. I know they would. Wandering Emperor basically eats a counter spell in this matchup. Doesn't do much else. Yeah, I know. They're topping lands. It, it's nice. Okay. Didn't expect that. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you for the fateful absence. I need to hit my lands. I think I'm going to try to. The Dovin's Veto, like I said, even if they have counter protection for their Teferi, it's a counter target Teferi and we need it. Yay, land. The wall holds off the 2-2. Two -two. Maybe we'll find an easy solution to the wall soon. No go for it. Guess they don't have protection for Teferi. With four cards in hand, we could go for it. I think I'm going to try the formula first. So, oh, they got a Haven. Maybe I should blow up that Haven. Yeah, let's take care of that first. When it has a free color list, you want to use it? March on my token. X equals one. It didn't even have to. Sure, you got it. Three cards. Three cards. If they're all counter spells, we can still muscle through scrutiny. 
Um, we could draw now and try to hit lands. What are we discarding, potentially? Man, discarding any of these is sad. What would we discard? Maybe I just slam the Elspeth Conqueror's death, but then they slam Teferi. It's pretty bad. Uh, nothing I can really do here except for Fateful Absence or Wall, which for me is not an option. I thought about Fateful Absencing my own token last turn, but decided against it. Now I kind of regret it. I mean, this is a tough discard. I think it's packed. It's that or absence. All right, absence. But that does mean our hand is very good. Theirs is pretty medium. All right, let's uh, try to draw with the scrutiny. So probably this might draw a counterspell. We'll see. We discarded a hand size last turn. If I were in their shoes, I might let this resolve, even if I could counter it. But they're going to go for Syncopate. X equals two. It's fine. Three cards. Okay, Revelation. We're going to run this at them again. Off the top, no play. Sphinx for three. Because we really want lands. Okay, Sensor, sure. Back to three cards. There's the land. We're going to run Discover at him. Absorb? Sure. I think our Teferi is going to resolve, though. Yeah, they ran out. You knew it would happen eventually. We need to move quickly. Uh, settle the wreckage me. Good game. Yeah, you got it opponent <laughs> And the Teferi that resolves is the victor Our opponent is playing Golos and we have ways to blow up the world and good mana So I'll keep it on the draw. See how fast of a start they get off to Bobble them They're going to enjoy that fabled passage off the top. Incubation Druid. Do we bolt the bird? Yeah, we bolt the bird. Make them pay a lot more for that. So no counter spells yet. Countering Golos into Oblivion is usually the strategy, and we don't have it at this time. I also don't have triple white for cleansing, but I have a feeling we'll figure that out. Inquisition, total whiff. But now they know that we don't have any counter spells for next turn. I'll go for Teferi, try to shut down their counter spells, and we can bounce Golos. Of course, bouncing Golos not ideal. They're going to bind Teferi. Okay. Do you think they have another binding for this Teferi? I don't know if I like blowing up the Teferi that way. You might just want to play Golos there and put me on the back foot. So I have to be responding. Here I can play my other Teferi. And then you're playing Golos from behind. If they had a counter spell there, it would make sense. We'll also see if they have another removal, another binding type effect. Still no counter spells. You'd think we don't even run them. We've drawn basically nothing but land since the keep. Oh, Sphinx's Revelation, and that's about it. The Prismatic Bridge, huh? Did they... They saw the farewell. Interesting. Let's skip to the good part. Very interesting. So, I think actually what I want to do here is Otawara the bridge and make them do it again. It's a very expensive play, and now we have the mana advantage of Teferi. This will let us either counter the bridge on the way back if we don't want to blow it up with Disallow, or we cast Chemistry's Insight. It also allows us to next turn cast Farewell. Um, sure. We could counter it, but that wastes the mana, so we'll let them take the Disallow here. And 
and they keep on top. Let's try to keep that in mind. You play an expensive incubation druid. Doesn't really put any pressure on the board. Fresh cards for us. Swords for the druid is good. So we want to spend some mana on main phase and play the Lotus Field. I mean, I know I want to do this. Let's do this. Play the Lotus Field. Sacrifice the basics. Yeah, we have the we have the fountain to keep the mana good. And now we've got five mana open and a bunch of fresh cards. We found the counter spells. They all started flowing at about the same time. All right, that's blue. Sabotage. Some people say it looks like me. It was my signature card in the early days of Arena. They are destroyed. You think you can resolve a Teferi against the Teferi? Not today. Today's patron shout out goes to Jay Vaughn Maxi. Jay, you're cool. On the draw against Mono Red, we've got Divine Purge and we've got Humiliation for the Torbran to take its abilities away. And we've got Impulse for the second planes. So I'll keep the hand. The pull from tomorrow is not great, but uh, hopefully we can stall out long enough for it to do something useful. The veto might be good, we'll see. Sometimes you hit Experimental Frenzy, you know, a really important card advantage spell. No one drop. Who are you? What have you done with Mono Red, my great adversary? Mana Gorger Phoenix. Um, whenever you cast a spell, if it's in your graveyard, put a flame counter on it. Uh, blah, 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 alchemy, blah, blah, blah. All right, it's fine. It's totally fine because we're just going to purge it. We don't really care what happens if it's in a graveyard. I'll read it if it ends up in a graveyard. How about that? Very constructive approach to alchemy. I'll read it, you know, if the text ever gets re relevant. All right, we need the land. Draw. Ooh, do I hang with this? Um, If I let them play their Torbran here... The Oracle can block the Helm, I guess. Then the Purge gets a lot worse. How am I going to hit my land drop? I, ju I just have to pray. Uh, I'm going to make them have the land drop or the removal for the Oracle, and I'm going to play this out. It also adds five Moxen, and four mo five Moxen and a Black Lotus to the deck that we could draw like lands. You want some? Come get some. Do they want to trade? Is a trade what's on their mind? They're thinking about it. How about you be the red deck that doesn't attack? How about that? They must not have many creatures if they're really thinking about this. But then what do they have? A bunch of burn spells? Because they didn't think hard about that Torbran. It's weird. It's very weird. Maybe playing their commander actually crashed their computer. <laughs> Been there. I just have to know, did, did playing Torbrand crash their computer? The power of plus two damage on their resources? Or are they just that kerflummoxed by the bird wizard? Come on, opponent. Don't time out. Don't time out. I I cherish these moments to play Teferi, Teferi Hero of Dominaria against Mono Red, Torbrand, Thane of Red Fell. It's like going back to the past. Yeah, there you go, Mono Red. Come at me, bro. The, the, the roping is very mono red as well. It's a, it's all coming back to me now. It's definitely all coming back to me now. All right, we got the Mox Pearl. Taste it. Now you have no abilities. And we could purge, but let's wait. Yeah, let's wait. Because we do purge our own Mox Pearl. Which is kind of sad. Maybe I was supposed to purge, then play the pearl, but there's only one creature on the board. Seems kind of wasteful. Next turn, we can play Teferi and bounce the Torbran. Yeah, 
playing uh, against Mono Red and getting roped. It is all coming back to me now. <laughs> ah, this was every day of my life for like a year. Get those angry Reddit posts. Why did somebody play Blue Eye Control? They not let me play my Mono Red Jack. Not let me burn and kill everything. Me, 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 me. Like, you're literally just playing the most streamlined thing possible to try to kill on turn four. You're going to complain about me. All right. Yeah, I'm the villain. I'm the bad guy for making you actually think instead of just play the card that lights up and win. You poor, poor baby. All right, Teferi. Can we rope this into oblivion now? All right, Torran, out of here. Might be a bad idea. Yay for white mana. Endless white mana available. Crack a cold one, baby. <sighs> when you rope me like this, when I board wipe like that, it's so hard to admit, but it's all coming back to me. Do not judge me too hard on the singing for this one. I'm sick. I am, uh, super sick actually and if we're gonna go into monologue time with cgb because i'm getting roped the uh, yeah i uh this is the sickest i've been in like a year so it's that fam you know you get together with family you do the holiday thing you go around you get together with the family you always get sick afterwards they're they're freaking children they're just germ magnets got them Classic game with mono red. 100% throwback. Mono blue against Sithis. Not so much. Mulligan. Uh, yeah. So this hand. Not good against Sithis. Um, it's a very bad hand against Sithis. But the hour of revelation is the thing that gives me hope. Maybe this could pull it off. <sighs> On the draw too. I keep, I keep, if they just go crazy and explode onto the battlefield, maybe the hour brings it all back. I mean, there's two permanents right there, right? They need 10 or more permanents, and we need a lot of white mana to make this work. Ow, Sithis. All right. Come on, brainstorm. Hook me up. A late counterspell. I don't think it really matters how we put things here because there's no shuffle effect. They might both sage you me though. All right, we don't want them to flip this, so we want to do our best to keep creatures off the board. I'm okay with other enchantments as long as they don't end the game quickly. Oh, it's going to get some scry on. Rune of Might, sure. That's another permanent. You're going to draw a lot of cards, but there's nothing I can do about that. What we have to be really wary of is cards like Heroic Intervention. All right. Do I play the Malevolent Hermit? If they play a creature, the next turn, I can't stop them from flipping. But they might play a jail type card that exiles the Hermit. All right. We got to start getting our white mana moving. We did draw our third white. This does also add a permanent to the battlefield. 10, one, two, three, four, five, halfway there. Yeah, I'm not blocking. And they're not playing. Good, good, very good. Home of the sun, why not? All right, that's a lot of permanence, actually. That's a lot of permanence. We're getting there. I think I'm going to three mana hour them. And then if I have counterspell open afterwards for their Sithis, that's so good. Oh, uh, they get to flip, though, which is very sad, but uh, we'll take it. I'll find a way to deal with that. Um, No blocks. 
We want to get to this hour. This is a land now though. So we did get a setback. What are they on? Seven? Opponent with a lot of instant speed stuff going on. Supreme Verdict. That is a card. Dispute's probably not a card. On this matchup. I mean, we could just verdict them. But I think we're drawing cards. We're getting into position. Let's keep just letting it go. Like, they're going to make the creature. Don't sack that. No! No, I needed that. It's like they know. If I get under 10, I'll just verdict what we have. But I'm trying to... I really want to hit the hour. But I guess if they have no permanents other than creatures... It doesn't matter, right? They didn't make a critter. They just scried. Not drawing a lot of cards. Huh. Okay. I mean, maybe they're playing around the Hermit. Well, we're down to 12. They're passing the turn. I mean, I kind of want to get mana tithed here if they have it. So... Let's see. Farewell is amazing. I guess I'll take my bird wizard friend. I mean, if they're not doing much, let's play the bird wizard and maybe we'll draw them out a little bit more and get that power nine into our deck. A few time walks would go a long way. It's a weird game. Usually they like really push out the enchantments to try to get value out of their commander. It's almost like they know. So where are we at? Permanence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. So they'll name Teferi, I'm sure. Why name Black Lotus? Could be relevant. One more. One more. Yeah, Thopter. Oh, that's perfect. That's exactly what... Oh, wait, that takes a permanent off the battlefield. Okay. <laughs> it's, come on, man. Come on. Give me a permanent. Let's go. Come on, dude. Just one. I mean, I could just cast it now, but I can't counter on the way back is the problem. So I think I just verdict this, which is a bummer. Um, mm. Maybe they'll make one permanent. Maybe they'll play something if I block now, but if I block, then yeah. Okay. Just be patient. Patient, patient, patient. Down to seven. Come on, play something. Come on. <gasps> Wait, that fights, doesn't it? <laughs> Would you come on? <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to do something cool here. Um Alright, so this enters the battlefield. They draw a card. This makes this fight this. So I should probably counter it. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter if I blow it up anyway. I'm just, I hope they play a one mana spell if this, when this dies. That's what I, that's what I hope. Play a one mana spell. Come on. Come on. I want to pay three for this hour. How did they know? How do they play around it? Unbelievable. Okay. Mox Pearl. Wait, that does it. <laughs> That's why this card is $3,000 or $6,000 or whatever it is now. I don't know. I got mine for ninety dollars when I was a baby. So, uh, we did the thing. Never didn't have it. I don't have that Mox Pearl anymore, for those of you wondering. Um, that Mox Pearl is, is gone. So do I get rid of this? Yeah, it's kind of like fighting the commander. It's just as much of a problem. Hallowed haunting, disdainful stroke. Now, now the counter spells can be good. They really played around this hermit for a long time. Memory lapse. That will be helpful.
Got him down to 41. Right where we want him. Generous visitor. Sure. Seal away. Yes. This is this is good. This makes farewell even better when they take out the oracle. And nothing else? Unnatural growth post-combat. Hype. All right. Sorry for the sniffles, but I am sick. You gotta, you gotta give me a break on this one. We need to move quickly. Reliquary Tower is a good one. All right, all creatures, all enchantments. Another power nine into the deck, please. Oh, come on! <laughs> oh, we were gonna we were gonna make all kinds of fun things happen. All right, got the win over Sithis with what I thought was a mediocre hand. I think they played around Malevolent Hermit so much, it bought us all the time that we needed to put it together. We're in the mirror. I need cheap counter spells. Instead, what I have is no blue mana. Heliod's intervention. <laughs> ah, free mulligan. Fix the mana. Okay, two cheap counter spells. Not the cheapest. I really do want the one mana ones, but this will be fine. Card draw potentially an intervention to pressure them into taking actions. Uh, disallow off the top is good. Yeah, we're doing it. We're doing it. Let the staring match begin. Blue wizard battle. Freaking midnight clock to the top with you. Make them draw that again. Could have ghost courted their land, uh, but you know, then we're down a land. Disallow the midnight clock. Yeah, no rocks. Also no lands, your go. <laughs> Game on opponent. Um, I'm gonna resolve this now. They might have a handful of counter spells. Oh, there's a cheap counter, a swan song. That's excellent. Oh, the spam begins. Oh, we tilted them. We tilted them into oblivion. We have packed, but we're still not going to run the Teferi into it. Let's just wait till we have the swan song protection. Then we have counter and counter. Do we get roped now? What are they mad about? I just played smart. What? <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> All right. I won't engage with you then. I'm going to go check my phone. What do we have here? Somebody tweeting at me. Yeah! <laughs> I think they're raging at me on Twitter now. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Nothing. So, the the historic brawl format, guys. We have, we have ascended. We have ascended into the salty rope tier. God, I love it. I love making another Teferi player this upset because it shows there's just no mental stamina under some of you. You don't deserve the power of the hero of Dominaria. You've got to be able to take the blows and battle through. And sometimes you can't win, but you scoop and you get on to the next one. And you know what? That's not just control. That's not just a blue-white thing. That's what life is about. As Rocky would say, it's how winning is done. All right. It's life. It's what you got to do. You got to take the blows, the bad luck, the things that don't go your way. Get into the next one. Do better. But no, they can't let go. They're just going to rage. They're just going to salty rope. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to drop a freaking Teferi on their face. Because I don't care if they're sad. I don't care how bad things went for them. This is my game. This is my jam. And I'm doing my thing. And I'm taking care of my business. No mercy. No mercy whatsoever. So come on. Come on, Oe Bergy. Show us what you're made of or get out. This is like Cobra Kai. <laughs> Only tough love available here. No sympathy. Yep. Yeah, it looks like you've chosen the way of the coward. So be it. So be it, Bergie. I'll see you down the road. 
I'll be in the winner's circle. You'll be crying on the bench. We go first with one land. What happened to my hand smoothing algorithm? I mean, I'll take this. So we're up against Uro. Uro, the first thing I played in Historic Brawl, and then it blew up the queue for a day or two. Hour of Revelation, they don't have that many permanents normally, so we'll bottom that one. And away we go. Behold, blue mages staring at each other. Take four. At least for today. Green on the crossroads. Do they scry? Or do they untap? They scry. So they probably aren't holding a counter spell that they think they'd have to play. Ooh. Oh, hello. Oh, did you come to the right party? Oh my goodness. That's going to drive them crazy, probably. At least the backside, for sure. There's the Uro. Do we counter it? Just shut it down? Yeah. Just slow them down. Make them pay five if they want to do that. Which means, if they have to pay five to cast their Uro, we can play the Teferi. You know they don't want that. But in the meantime, we're attacking them with the Hermit. Did they send this to command? Nope. They sent it to graveyard. Witness protection. Witness protection, huh? We could negate that. Or we could sack this. Uh, then they don't have to pay. I, I think I'm going to go for the negate. I think that this is worth fighting for. The hermit just kind of puts so much pressure on them. Yeah, worth fighting for. We shut them right down. Uh, so the next turn, I'm probably not going for Teferi until I can protect it with Hermit. But we get to pull for tomorrow for three on their end step. And yeah, they just didn't want to play with that. Always with the Teferi mirrors. This is a Dovin's Veto to counter a Teferi. And then four, three card draw spells. Hopefully we draw land. That's the only question mark. The other question mark is if they have more threats than their Teferi. But most of these decks are mostly made up of answers. I think I'm just going to do this now so it doesn't get stifled. As conservative as that sounds, you know they're going to run cards like Tail's End and they might run cards like Stifle. Disallows another one. Defabricates another one. Fortell. All right, probably the worst draw that we could have in the deck are any kind of board wipes. So that's enough of that. No more, please. The turns are passing. Like sands, like sand through the hourglass. These are the days of our control player lives. Another board wipe. Don't like that, but hey. Let's see, do they have card draw? They don't have instant speed card draw. That's big. That is big. Because this will definitely get their attention. Do you counter the card draw or not? Always a big question. Gosh, I'd love to keep this to fairy. If I resolve it, it's so good. But I think the responsible play is to take the lands from this position. We have scrutiny and revelation in our hand. And now Graven Lore. Easy discard here. It's the board wipe. Opponent, though, you know, they got this castle. Ooh. They have a shark typhoon. How afraid of a shark are we? So we could tails end it. We have the veto. I think I tails end it. Keep the pressure low. And then I don't have to discard to hand size. So if they have Swan Song or Mystical Dispute, they might go for Teferi here, which walks right into Veto, which would be nice. But nope, they've got a tapped Scryland. This will probably let us nuke the castle. 
Gotta expect this to be a saw it coming. They might play All Runs Epiphany. If it were a Behold the Multiverse, we'd have seen it by now. Might be a Doomscar too. A lot of people still play Doomscar. And that would be the best case scenario. If the opponent floats a mana here, they could play like a Discover the Formula. Oh, Lazatap plating. That's so mean. And they still have mana up. That's so good for them. Okay. All right. That sucked. Set myself back on mana badly. Maybe I should have plating in here. It is good against Thought Distortion too. It comes up. Time for the one ones to begin their March of Doom. But we still have a lot of pressure we can put on the opponent with card draw spells. Ooh, until Narset comes out, which means this sucks, but we got to do it. You can't let them Narset us. We have too much card draw in our hand. Let's get this down. Hopefully they're still too scared to go for Teferi. Because right now, we are exposed. And we are down in mana. But they don't have to go for it. Like, they have this castle, so I think they're going to sit back on it. Actually, let's not do the Graven Lore, because we know we want this. Let's just do this. They're low on cards, so we want them to feel comfortable. But then uh, we want to sneakily be drawing way and way further ahead. A lot of people don't like getting their stuff countered so much that then it tightens them up, right? So right now we have to discard two. If I play this, we have to discard one. We'll just make it uh, planes. The I don't want to show them the castle right now, though. I want them to still feel like this is getting ahead. while I try to draw into more counter magic. I want them to feel like they're winning when they do these castle plays and pass. Scry five, draw three. Resolves, oh, look at this counter magic. Look at it all. Oh, we got the Oracle, too. And Farewell is not great. Uh, let's go ahead and play the castle now. We don't want to have to discard it. Go for the Oracle. We're going to get Whirlwind Denied. Okay. Don't want to pay for decline. It's fine. Didn't really need that to resolve. It's fun, but I didn't need it. We get to drop one of these board wipes. Opponent's gonna keep making one ones. But eventually we wrath, then we to fairy, or we find another way to uh, wipe the board. All right, more foretell. So we can guess Doomscar saw it coming. Another two. We have so much card draw, it doesn't really matter too much if we burn these. It's only two. Okay, they're gonna quench it. All right, they're down to two cards and two foretolds. They can't activate the castle this turn, so it's a good turn to wrath the board. And if I Narset them and they counter it, they probably can't defend Teferi, but if they do defend Teferi next turn, we can Hour of Revelation them. Saw it coming. Resolve. Yep, only two cards left. This is a Doom Scar, I think. 
Yep, no more counter spells. And you know what that means. My turn. The card drawing always wins. I know if I were in their shoes, I'd be really frustrated with the amount of card draw that I got to pull off and they didn't, they just got to sit there and watch. All right, two mana open, scorn you. Out of there, Doomscar, definitely Doomscar. Superior to Fairy Mage wins again. And we are back for the post-game wraps, and we are 9-0, at least on my PC, with Teferi, the hero of Dominaria. This is also a deck I've played a ton on my iPad. You know, nothing nothing says winding down for the night more than some uh, White Lotus on HBO Max, and some Teferi, hero of Dominaria, shutting my opponents down on my iPad. You know, uh, let's see, what am I on? On the iPad, I don't have my stats, but I would guess it would combine to something along the lines of, like, 25 and 6 or 7 something like that um it's also interesting to note and i found this on my ipad as well four of my nine matches were mirrors to fairy mirrors if you hate the teferi mirror i'm sorry this is part of what being relegated to hell q actually means you will play against the same commanders and often the mirror match way more than you do with a commander that is not relegated to hell q and this is just kind of a punishment that comes with awesomeness it tells you that they believe wizards believes to fairy is an a plus tier commander one of the best in the game and if you want to wield the power of that commander then you have to be prepared to fight others also wielding that power so yeah uh dominating in the mirrors just, well you watch some of the games it comes down to patience and having just better draws and using those spells in the right time and you'll be just fine anyway to fairy it's a great one. This is the list I would use, although I've also seen a list that uses a ton of bounce spells and blink spells for Teferi, which I might also try someday in the future. But I do really enjoy this one. If you like to blow them up, counter them, and watch them rage quit, there is no better way. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I'll see you in the next video. You stayed till the end. Top it off. Hit like, hit subscribe. You're cool. I always build my historic brawl decks card by card from scratch. Yeah! And it takes a long time, but making the perfect brawl list is very, very difficult. One of the more competitive decks in the format, competing in the Hell Cube, and takes a lot of time and exploration, more than I can put into one daily video. So I'd like to thank the following content creators who I always check out for inspiration and ideas for my deck lists. Legend. Today we're taking a look at two heavens as one, as suggested by my supporters on Patreon. Amy the Amazonian. Welcome to Brawl Stars. Today we're playing one of my favorite commanders, Volo. I'm not fine. That is lethal. Wow. <laughs> GG. And the historic Brawl stronghold on Discord. Thank you guys. Great content, and I appreciate the inspiration.